So I've got this weird Game Boy color here. I think I think it's foreign or something. I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, but anyway, I um, I picked this up as part of a lot I bought a while back, not because it had this included in the lot, but because it had a bunch of other things, and this just so happened to be included in that lot. Uh, anyway, for those that don't know, this is a Wonder Swan color. Uh, it was made by Bandai Electronics. You've probably heard of that brand before. Um, to my knowledge, it was pretty much exclusive to Japan, uh, but it was basically the Game Boy Color? Game Boy? Not Game Boy Color specifically, but the, a competitor to the Game Boy lineup. Um, and it was actually really cool. It was designed such that you could use it to play like this or like this, depending on the specific game that you're playing. You know, it supports both handheld or um, landscape and portrait. Really cool device. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't really sell outside Japan. Um, so all of the games that you can get for the thing, well, they're in Japanese mostly. Um, now I have this one. I really don't have that many games for it. In fact, I literally just have the one. And I don't actually know what game this is because I have played all of 30 seconds to make sure it works and then I've done nothing else. Um, let's find out, shall we? <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's text-based, so that's super cool. And I haven't actually gotten further than this because I don't know what any of these options are. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, this is not the only one I have, but this is not the one I'm going to be playing with this for this video because this one has a really peculiar problem in that I can't actually turn it off. And in case that's not a uh, simple fix, I'm not going to use this one because the lock came with the second one. Uh, so this, these things are... Again, I'm just going to talk about them a little bit more because I can and because I haven't actually had one of these on my channel yet. Um, but this is one of three models. There's the original Wonder Swan, which is a black and white screen. Uh, there's this one, which is the Wonder Swan color. And then there's the Wonder Swan crystal, which the screen on the Wonder... The Wonder Swan color and the crystal play the same games, but the screen on the crystal is um, a little bit more like a Game Boy Color where it's that uh, passive reflective screen, whereas this is um, this weird active matrix screen, much more reminiscent of like a Game Boy Pocket. Uh, so if we turn this on, you can see we have our, uh, we have a contrast dial. Anyway, these things are not known for their high quality screens. I don't like it. And I'm looking at the camera, I see a bunch of flickering going on on the screen. You don't see that in person, so you'll just have to bear with me on the camera. Uh, but this one, I can turn off. So this is the one that we're going to be playing with today. Um, but let me pop this on here. Again, I've done no Googling. I'm guessing if I Google that number, I'll find more information. But I did notice something interesting about this game. I saw this symbol. I don't know what it is, but it's also on my Game Boy. And this is a Gundam Game Boy, the Char Custom something or other. But anyway, carrying on, shall we? So what we've got to do, if I can find it, is uh, this brand new backlight kit for the Wonder Swan. Now this is not the first backlight kit for the Wonder Swan, but I've never had one of these before, so I've never actually played around with backlight kits. And if I'm going to play around with this, I want to be able to use the screen. What is this? That is a problem. Now, to clarify, this metal thing does not come in the packaging. I put it in there so I wouldn't lose it, and then it's been sitting on my desk. Um, but I'm guessing that's part of the screen. So it's probably not good. It's probably not bad. Yeah, it looks like it's just a little chunk of plastic from the corner that broke off because there's that chunk there, but then it's missing there. And this looks like it would go just like that. 
And unless this is a custom manufactured LCD specific for backlighting these things, then that doesn't matter at all. And even if it, even if it is that, then it probably still doesn't make too big of a difference. Anyway, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. So we've got two sheets of insulation material. One probably goes on the screen and then one goes on the PCB itself. They are both labeled, so shouldn't be too hard to figure that one out. Uh, we have the brain of the mod itself. This takes the uh, input from the console, works some magic, and then displays the screen on the uh, included LCD here. We have what I am 98% sure is a uh, adhesive gasket to hold the LCD into the uh, frame of the console itself. Two wires, because this mod does require soldering. A uh, flat flex connector to hook this up to this, into here. And then the screen itself. And mine did come with this little screwdriver, and I'm pretty sure they all do. Um, you don't need this if you have your own screwdriver set, but it is handy to have because these consoles use this weird, not quite Torx, but almost Torx screw. Uh, but, ta-da. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, this screen actually looks very similar to the one used in the new Game Boy Advance backlight kit that's coming out next few days basically some people already have them and it looks to be about the same size too so that might actually be the same screen it'd be interesting to find out for those wondering here is the information on the screen that's fpc dash zcy three zero 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 three dash a i doubt the rest of these numbers matter those are probably the component designations for the stuff soldered to that Nothing on the back other than pin markings, 1 through 39. Interesting how these screens always use a 39 pin connector. But anyway, anyway, moving on, moving on. Set that stuff aside. And let's tear this thing apart. I've never actually taken one of these apart, so bear with me. Um, oh shoot, it just dropped. A wire. We're at the pause. Don't worry, crisis averted. So anyway, never actually taken one of these things apart. Um, but real quick, just for troubleshooting purposes, for those that are new to these things, and for you know, if you don't know, if you don't have a game in it, or if you do have a game and the game is not recognized, or you know the cart slots damaged or something, you try and boot it up there'll be like no indication that it's working. You'll see some lines on the screen, but that's it. Like it, if this were a Game Boy, I would assume the Game Boy's dead, but there's just, there's just no boot logo when there's no game. You have to, you have to have a game in there for it to do something. But anyway, pull that out. It uses this weird battery sled. I don't really like it because if you, you lose this sled, you can't, really power this thing but I'm assuming they did it that way um, I haven't actually checked around so forgive me if I'm wrong I'm just speculating about stuff I don't know anything about uh, but I'm assuming they made like matchstick battery style um, rechargeables that you can slot in here uh, instead of having this bulging double A holder but I don't know just a guess on my part Anyway, getting sidetracked. That's not what matters. So yeah. This tool is just for removing these screws, which are not quite Torx. But, if you have a Torx set, it looks like this is a T6. Oh no, I lied, it's T7. Yeah. I'm just gonna use my screwdriver. 
that is way easier. And I'm guessing these are all the same screw because it makes things significantly easier from a manufacturing perspective. And when things are easier, they are cheaper. And indeed they are. Okay. Six screws, same as a Game Boy. And then this comes apart, mayhaps. Doesn't seem to want to release on the bottom here. It's probably clips. So we could just send it. Or, I could pause and go look up some instructions on taking this apart, so I don't break it. Because I'm sure I'm not the first one. It's getting stuck right here. Feels like it wants to come off at an angle. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna pause before I break something. Okay, so the verdict seems to be just send it and it comes apart and go figure. I was afraid of breaking something, so I was being ginger, but just angle it off like that and it seems to come. Interesting tangent. While I was looking that up in the YouTube autoplay, the very next video is an instruction on uh, Wonder Swan color won't turn off. How interesting. Anyway, I'll have to take a look at that later. Set that aside for now. I'm actually going to pull this whole thing apart out of the housing like usual uh, now would be a great time to clean it up because this one in particular is actually kind of gross but probably not going to do that I'm guessing this comes out the same way Game Boy screens do yep Get a little twist I would do that from the bottom. I wonder if it's possible to backlight this screen the same way you do a Game Boy. It's probably not a film you can peel off. Well, maybe. I'll have to investigate that later. Anyway, I'm going to set this aside for now. And plug this back in. Because out of curiosity, I like to see what kind of battery life these mods, how these mods affect battery life. Uh, so to do that, I'll have to plug it in, test it out, get a before and an after. Uh, so let's, now if I recall correctly, the voltage regulators in this thing are pretty badass and they'll take anything from like one to five volts. Because it's designed for a double A though, I'm going to set it to 1.5. Oh, uh, and I never set up a quick set for that. That's a shame.
I also should have done it by the big screen. It would have been quicker. Oh well, we're there now. Set. And power is on this side. Ground is on this side. Turn it on. And as you can see, it's drying absolutely nothing. Let me get the buttons here. And with it on, on this title screen, you can see it pulls fuck all. So that is anywhere from 53 to 82, 84 milliamps. Anywhere from 52 to 84 milliamps. It's, these things are so good on battery, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I think that's good enough. Um, like a Game Boy though, I am 100% certain that that number will change depending on exactly what you're doing, uh, exactly what game you're playing, and you know if you're using a flash cart, that sort of stuff. Side note, I don't actually know if there's a flash cart available for these things. I'm pretty sure there is, but I don't know that for sure. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure there's a Wonder Swan Flash Master. I suppose that counts as a flash cart. I don't think there's like an EverDrive or anything like that though. All right, let's pull that out of there. Save this for later. Probably never use it again. And let me pull up my instructions again because I am unfamiliar with these things. It's amazing how simple they are, you know? It's just a system on a chip, power regulator, um, probably screen voltage regulators here, um, and fuck all else. Uh, oh, and then this would be the uh, power regulation board. So I'm guessing that's an amplifier for the audio. I don't know. Interesting though. Anyway, keep getting distracted. This is what I get for taking apart stuff for the first time. Um, the screen itself. So this replacement LCD is actually technically a little bit smaller uh, because the original one has this ribbon cable hanging off of it. But I guess the replacement one does too, but you can fold that tighter than you can fold this one. That is very interesting. All right, let's try it out. Unfortunately, this kit cannot pull the power that it needs from the uh, LCD bus, so you do have to do some soldering here. This one you are supposed to run through that hole, but I think we'll do the soldering first. Probably need to crank the heat on my iron. Nope, we're good. You should always orient your parts in a way that's convenient for you to solder. But, you know, just do what works for you. And you'll be fine. Same thing over here. 
here. I sure am popular tonight. So this one, this Hindu little hole we can run this through. And then this one we just have to wrap around the board. Oh, okay. I thought I had it backwards. This gets soldered right there. So let's tin that pod. And I think we're done with that. So I did just notice that this has select R and L pads. Um, I'm guessing that that means this supports uh, button controls instead of touch pads. Uh, if that's the case, wiring on this should be the same. Hang on. All right, pardon me. Um, as I was saying, button control wiring should be the same on this as it is on a Game Boy, but let's double check that. Um, some Game Boy consoles, like the original Game Boy and the Game Boy Pocket, used a um, diode matrix away, away, a diode matrix away, a diode matrix array for uh, the buttons, uh, whereas. The Game Boy Color and newer used um, common ground for the buttons. So if that's the case, we should be able to check continuity. We'll find a ground, which I'm just going to use the one right here that I just soldered to. And ooh, this does not appear to use common ground. That or the ground on the uh, power input is isolated. Let's double check that. This big old plane is probably ground. Nope, stone. Oh! So, on the sound button, it's common ground. Yeah, that is a ground. So yeah, this uses a diode matrix array, I'm guessing then. Um, and in that case, I don't know what the uh, wiring's going to be. I lied, I probably should have double checked that before I said, Oh, I'll use the same wiring. But... Based on all these test pads, I'm guessing you're going to want to use one of them. I don't know which, though. You also probably want it wired to these buttons and then start. Right here, so probably left one and right one and then start. But your guess is as good as mine. I don't know, I don't know what the primary buttons are, but I'm thinking... No matter which orientation you're using it in, you're using this control pad and probably start. So, because if you're using it in portrait, you'd have to reach up here. If you're using it in landscape, you know you'd have to reach up here. Well, I guess on that note, it could be. You might actually want to use these ones instead. Yeah, I don't know. It's up to you, I guess, but it does. 
still have the touch sensors, love, like them or hate them. So let's let's carry on. So this has a little adhesive thing in there for the original screen. I'm just going to go ahead and reuse that. This goes in the ribbon cable on this side. There does not appear to be like there there's room for error here. So I'm going to leave the um the sticky stuff on. Actually, before I even do that, I'm sorry, we should test this before going any further. So this goes in here. Let's pull that up. can't really wait does that go contacts up I think it goes contacts down <sighs> it goes contacts up okay had that right well I would have gotten there eventually Now we need power supply again. Positive, de negative. And I will try and orient this in such a way. That we can both see everything. That's uh, that's real awkward, and I really don't like that. I think we'll have to fold that ribbon cable. And there's just no getting around that. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. I'm just going to leave it awkward for now. Because even like this, you can still see the screen. Let me turn that on. And then I will turn this on. Maybe. I got the membrane lined up. Oh, there it goes. Looks surprisingly good. But we'll uh, we'll see how it looks in a minute. Um, so at the same voltage, it is pulling quite a bit more power. Holy cow! So what was it? Average sixty milliamps. We are now averaging like. 350. Uh, it looks like the low is about 206, the high is about 402. You can see on the power supply that sawtooth pattern, that's why the um, power usage keeps jumping up and down, uh, just with how the, with, with how this thing draws power, it draws it like in spurts. I don't know how to really explain that otherwise, but that's why my uh, display here goes up and down so frequently. Let's see what these touchpads do. Okay, so it looks like this one is that color palette nonsense that we get on Game Boy Colors. I'm not getting reliable. 
input from it. And that could just be because it's not in the case. Yeah. Works better when I approach it from this angle. This doesn't seem to change anything. But this is really not the best game to test this. I'll have to play more with that out of the case. This other one, I believe, is going to be brightness. Yeah. And that one up too. Come on. I hate this. <laughs> so it starts at the brightest, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine levels. Um, so at the brightest, 474 to 412. It's, it evens out quite a bit at the brightest. That's interesting. That must be the... Um, that power usage we're seeing then must be the PWM for the backlight. And since it's up higher, it's pulsing faster, and it's not varying as much. So one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then at the lowest, you see it's varying quite a bit. 183. 313 ish. If we bring it up, it evens out. Very interesting. So, your battery life, quite frankly, is going to be garbage. Kit does work though, so that's nice. I will, despite this not being a Game Boy, I will add this to my Game Boy spreadsheet, and you can you can see the numbers I gathered from there. I'll even measure the brightness in Lux, mind, but. They do make new screen lenses for these things, so that might be a consideration. Yours is as beat up as mine. I was under the impression that you do not have to do any trimming. already a little bit of adhesive in there so that'll probably hold that in and that looks pretty good from this side a little bit of dust in there but usually what I do when I'm working on these videos is after the video is over I actually take the thing apart again and actually do the mod proper including um, cleaning off the dust and peeling off the lens but or the protective plastic but the reason I don't do that in the videos is because it just takes so freaking long and I don't want to be here filming longer than I have to it's purely for selfish reasons Oop, forgetting something They want you to use this on the back of the screen. Probably makes more sense to line it from the other side first. Uh, 
Actually, I don't think it matters too much because this is bigger than the screen anyway. I hate that, but all right. And this one goes here. And this one is supposed to go like this, give or take. And then we can put these touch sensors wherever we want. Stick one of them. Right there. Stick the other. Right there. buttons in there. Oh, the wire routing on this looks like it's going to be annoying. don't really know how they expect you to do it. It's probably a lot easier if you do much shorter wires. Why would it come with wire that long? Yeah, even the pictures show much shorter wires. This right one we can kind of coil up in here. There's no reason we can't just trim it. This left one. Stage left. Hmm. I think we're just going to Shove it under the screen and hope for the best. Note that there might be some fit issues with it there. We'll find out in a moment. Huh, everything seems to fit. that this wire ran under the power button. There we go. I don't like that. I think we need to change it. And then this thing, you're supposed to give it two folds. Just like that. There we go. Didn't quite fit together to my satisfaction. Feels like I'm compressing foam though, which I actually very may well be. So I'm just gonna send it anyway.
I've never actually said this in a video, but I suppose I can go over it now. Um, or maybe I have, I don't know. Whenever you're threading screws into plastic, you already have threads. Well, whenever you're threading screws into anything, if you already have threads, you should always back it off, thread it in reverse, until you hear that click and you feel the screw kind of drop into position. Now, of course, this one isn't doing it. Oh, there it goes. And then you can screw it in. Otherwise, if the screws catch at a wrong angle, you'll re-thread the hole, which you can only do so many times in plastic before the uh, threaded screw hole just dies completely, and which you just can't really do in metal unless you want to strip your screws. So here, I'll try it one more time. Back it off. And then you hear that click. That means the thread's dropped into place and you can screw it in normally. Cool. Let's see if it works with the CMAA battery. Ah, I got the position of the screen a little bit off. Oh no, I didn't. It's just slightly shorter. So with the touch sensors in their default positions, the left one is brightness, the right one is color palettes. And you'll have to forgive my game choice. Well, it's hardly a choice. You can see it keeps flashing the low battery icon. I don't think this battery has uh, very much life left in it. And for those wondering, this contrast dial does all of nothing with this screen. Yes. No. Yes. Oh, I think I just overrode a save. Well, too bad. I mean, all the buttons and stuff still feel the same. So that squishiness going together was probably that foam, which I'm guessing might be a good idea to trim that foam or remove it entirely. And so far, the screen does look pretty darn good. Uh, unfortunately, I can't run my usual tests on this on account of me not having a flash cart for this and count on them not actually being compatible with this hardware. I'm pretty sure I'm in a dialogue loop right now. Nope, that's new. It's just long. So some closing thoughts, um, I did grab some extra batteries just in case the original one I had in here didn't work once I dropped the screen in, but it does, so this thing is still pretty decent on batteries. I mean, the total battery life is not going to be great, but this is a mostly dead rechargeable battery. Um, this is a mostly charged rechargeable battery. And then this is one of those lithium ion constant voltage batteries. If this didn't work, I was gonna try this. And if this didn't work, this would have worked. But this seems to work. So I don't think you need to adjust what kind of batteries you're using. Story might change with a flash cart, but since I don't have one to test.
I do plan on buying more carts for this thing, by the way. I just... I got, I got the kit way before I got the carts. This is not the ideal to test this... It's not the ideal game to test this screen with, but for what it's worth, I have noticed zero screen tearing or uh, frame dropping or any other weird visual artifacts thus far. This is not a very entertaining game. I don't even know if I'm winning. Probably not. Anyway, that's enough of that. So, yeah, actually pretty cool kit. My understanding um, of the previous kits is that they will absolutely demolish your battery life, and that seems to still be true with this kit. Um, and one of the strange features of the Wonder Swan is that the screen is actually 75 hertz instead of 60 hertz, which I imagine makes emulation somewhat difficult since most devices don't actually support that right now. Unless you're on like, you know, a brand new console like the Xbox series or PlayStation 5, which technically don't even support these games anyway, so it's a little bit of a moot point. And you have a fancy TV or you're on a gaming computer with a high refresh display or like a brand new phone with a high refresh display, you're not going to be able to run these games at the full frame rate anyway, just as a hardware limitation. Uh, but the old kit did not support that frame rate either. Now, I have no idea if this new kit does, to be clear. No idea. Um, I just know that not all games run at that high frame rate. Some of them are still 60 locked. Um, I don't know if this is one. If it is, well... It still looks good. If it's not one of those locked games and it actually runs at the full 75, then this screen seems to run at the full 75 too. Um, sorry, I I don't know how helpful this has been, but I don't normally play with these weird esoteric consoles. I've always wanted to, so I figured I'd give myself the chance, but yeah. as you can see, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Anyway. I'm going to do more research on these consoles. I'm going to play with this a little bit more. We'll see this kit again. Uh, but my first impression here is that uh, if you if you are into these weird knockoff Game Boy Colors, then um, you know, it seems like a pretty good kit. Because... Uh, This stock screen is just unbearable, in my opinion. Oh, interesting note. I didn't see that flickering on the camera with that screen. Look at these lights. Yeah, it's not that better. New game, load game, continue. Let's continue. I don't know what any of this does. And then this one doesn't turn off. But, yeah. Fun stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, oh, before I go... I suppose I should say this. Uh, this kit was provided to me by Retro Game Repair Shop. I will throw a link. Ah, I just realized what that squishing is. This ribbon cable is not in a good spot. I think... Uh, I think it might be prudent to fold the excess under the board and then do another fold on top to get that angle. Hmm. 
I'll have to play with it a little bit more. I'll do that in another, I'll, I'll save that for another video. Anyway, sorry. Kit was provided by Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, they are currently out of stock on his website. I don't know if that's just because he hasn't marked them in stock yet, because he just sent this to me as soon as he got them. Um, I don't know if they're going to be a regularly stocked item, because again, these consoles are pretty esoteric. They did not sell as well as the Game Boy at all, even in Japan, and let alone outside Japan, since they didn't sell outside Japan. Um, so they're not that popular. All the games are in Japanese, so outside of Japan, still especially not that popular. There are some good, you know, big ticket con uh, items like Final Fantasy and such. Um, anyway, get to the point. Um, long story short, they are listed right now. I don't know when they'll be in stock, and I don't know how long they'll be in stock, and I don't know if they'll be a regularly stocked item but I will throw a link in the description if you want to grab one. Otherwise, I'm sure you'll be able to find it on Isle Express from the usual suspects. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic evening.